Over the course of today's guide episode, where we build hopefully my best enchantment setup of all time, we'll transform our world and talk build tips and tricks. Hey, and look, I know I always say it. I feel like every single build lately is going to transform the entire world, but this time around, this time around, I sincerely and solely mean it. In order to prepare for today's build that I think I kind of want to start right here next to this little terraform zone that I... Ah, oh, alright, I'll admit it, I didn't really terraform it. In order to prepare for today's build, I did a lot of preparation. In fact, maybe the most preparation before episodes. This build that we're going to construct nice, tall, and firmly right over here in the sky is going to advance us into the next era. So uh, over here for today's build, I pulled in just about every single beautiful type of wood in the entire land other than one that makes pods all everywhere. I made a small birch tree farm, a small oak farm, a small dark oak farm, and I even got vines too. I, just, I know they're not wood or all, but anyways, tree chopples. I lost and so we kick everything off with a hey. question. A big question from me to you. Lately, what games have we been into? I like, and I'm not just talking like Minecraft, of course there's Minecraft, but like, what else have you been playing lately that is absolutely amazing that 100% I need to check out? I always go in phases in my life where like sometimes I play more games, other times I play a little bit less games, but right now I'm in that game or phase of my life, that's for sure, so I'm looking for game recommendations left, right, and center. Though, and as always, if you've been enjoying the guide series, the episodes, everything we've been doing, let me know by tapping like. Thank you. So today I'm a man with a dream, I'm a man with a dream, and I'm a man with a bold, bold vision. In order to move our armor set along and fix it up a little bit more, and also buff it up a little bit more, there's one big thing that we need. Now that one single big thing, it rhymes with lenchanting, and it's spelled exactly like enchanting. I was thinking over here at the base, if we want to go ahead and advance the world along, well, look, it's no offense to that old dusty, crusty enchantment setup that we set up like a million trillion years ago. It's beautiful and it worked for the time, but it is also like, I mean, that's like thousands of blocks away and doesn't have this beautiful scenic view, right? And so with that, just like a story from a storybook, it was declared an enchanting setup rising right here. And as far as our eyes rise into the tall, tall sky, it shall be done. So here's what I was thinking. We got one, two, three, four, five. Maybe we could kick this build off over here with like maybe pillars of five or something like that. Then what I was thinking around the pillars of five is maybe contrast it a little bit. We're going to have these dark oak pillars. Why not like, I don't know, make it a little bit lighter. You know how it goes with like maybe some birch logs. Of course, for detailing on the build, I was thinking about leaving the birch logs just like that. You know, like, like like a birch log you know a little bit of building later and i don't like to brag too much you guys but i think so far i'm absolutely cooking this build is looking so remarkable for the top of the build i did a little bit of preparation and planning in between episodes you see in between episodes i was all over the place including over at my base look at this incident that i had to experience i'm sorry i don't I should, for the sake of monetization, I don't even know if I should be putting this image in here, but I, it's safe to say I solved this situation. I couldn't believe what I was saying. Additionally, in between episodes, I took a long trip, a long walk, all the way over to the desert biome, the closest one, and then the Badlands biome right next to it. I wanted to get a lot of sand, and I wanted to get a lot of terracotta for this build and for future ones. Because I came from the desert, I decided I would pick up some of the dead bushes and put them over here conveniently, right next to the spot where I think I left all of my scaffolding I'm down here. Aha. For this next part of the build, I have a, uh, I suppose you could call it a little bit of a hopeful vision. I really, really hope and anticipate that it was not a waste of time for me to travel all the way really far over to get a little bit of terracotta, collect up some granite left over from the chests over near the project zone of the last episode, and you know, just in general, stockpile up a ton of blocks because what I wanted to do here, inspired by the factory that we built over there, is use a little bit of granite and a little bit of terracotta. I think this could be the perfect way to cap off our enchanting build today. When creating these roofs like this, to add a little bit of detail, what I like to do is pick two blocks from different block families that maybe have similar coloration, and then come in and basically like, just mash them up, mix them up, go a little bit crazy. It doesn't all have to make sense or be perfect. 
on the ends to a spice them up and make them like kind of finish off a little bit nicer what i like to do is come back in and just basically pop the roof out a little bit more i think that'll look nice maybe i'll do like slabs there or maybe actually on this one i'll do it a little bit shorter maybe like spruce trap doors put it on the to do and so just like that a short bit of time later and our enchanting build is all just about done dusted and detailed give me all the praise all the love down below please thank you i know it's one of the most oh <laughs> oh, yes, yes. This is only the entrance to the build today, and I probably tricked you the entire time. You thought he was going to leave him like that? No chance in the world. Who am I? Who am I? Of course, we stripped those logs, and then uh, the energy was so, like, superior, if you will, up until this point in the video, because I knew I could do it. That part so far, that was the piece of cake, a cakewalk. Very, very simple. I can't lie. I'm a little bit nervous for today's build. You see, for today's build, enchanting setup, I was thinking about what in the world I would want to do for an aesthetic-looking, cool, enchanting setup. Then I kind of realized that it was going to probably have to tower up high and reach all the way up into the sky. Then after that, almost like a beautiful metaphor, like the rain that is pouring down inside of this world of sweat began dripping down my forehead. Sorry for the juicy details. I get nervous every single time we make a tower. I was imagining, in front of the build, the main, like, entrance, if you will, over here next to this pillar right there, we walk in. This will be the main door. Then we'll have this, like, little, like, eh, entrance gathering room or something like that. Then we walk through the build and turn around and go, boom, right up into the main part of the build. The real deal today, the tower. Oh, boy, the real deal today, the tower. So I want to build a tall tower right next to, well, right next to this other tower right there. As always, when you're setting up an enchanting setup inside of your world, throw that thing next to and close to an experience farm source. My experience farm source for now is, well, the only thing over here is a spider farm. So this will have to do. Over here on the flip side, I'm nervous. I, can you blame me? This is such a crucial part of the world. Over here on the flip side, over here, it's not looking too bad so far. We've got that small but quaint little building. I think the details look really nice. Then we've got the foundation of a tall tower sticking up right there. I was thinking, considering big fjord and all, really big drop, it might be kind of cool to set up some sort of, like, balcony looking out into the fjord. And considering the color of enchantments, purple. What about complementary colors? Yellow. So, I was uh, looking around at the base over here a little bit, and I'm shocked to find out that I don't think anywhere, like anywhere at all, I have a single rose bush. Have we never, up until this point in the whole world, Ever, ever, never, ever picked up a rose bush? <laughs> what? So, of course, at some point, I'm going to need to come back in and switch up some of the cobblestone with a little bit of mossy cobblestone. 100%, it's on the to-do list. I got it. Don't worry about it. I'll do it a little bit later. I feel like a good idea with these types of builds is always probably smarter to get a little bit of the shape in, some of your ideas in first before, like, coming back in and trying to detail the entire build. After all, if this tower ends up not exactly looking like a tower and is maybe shaped, uh, shaped like something else that I had built a tower shaped like before, we will have to knock it all down, so, yeah. Alright, looking at what I have going on over here with this side of the build, I think maybe what I could do is a small staircase, I might be able to fit it in there, ramping all the way up to this floor right here. This floor will kind of be like the main floor of the tower, and then maybe down there, I just kind of like close it all off and pretend it doesn't exist and tell you guys that I've fully finished the bottom. So guys, I've done it. This might actually be a little bit hard for you to believe too, but I've actually, a little bit of building later, fully finished the bottom area. Down below this floor right there, there's a fully detailed decorative room with like, you know, things like barrels and other cool decorationally related things. Down inside of that room, it went pretty hard. It's really cool. I didn't really put a door to it though, so just remind me to show you it later or something. So carrying on with the next rest part of the build here, we would kick things off with a tall door, I figured. With this being the second story of a build and behind a door, I could probably afford to leave that big archway nice and open. It'll be pretty cool. On the other sides, I want to continue carrying up the cobblestone. Of course, later on, I come back in and detail it with like a little bit of mossy, maybe even some andesite sprinkled in here too that could go really, really hard and look really, really good. However, shortly after I do all of this, maybe like one more layer, I want to try something out that I don't think I've ever really tried before. In fact, no, I, I realize 100% I've never tried this out before. What I want to kind of try and do up here, and I'm probably going to need like slabs and walls as well for this, but I almost want to make like a, 
a disconnect, a fade, a distortion, a crumbling of the tower, if you will. Basically, what I want to kind of do is have this tower go up and, like, be jagged and in random shapes and formations, everything like that. And then, basically, it crumbles away. And on the inside, you can see something way more cool and way more colorful. Kind of like that little subtle detail we did in the clock tower, you know? So this part of the build, it may be a test of patience, a, a practice of willpower, if you will. I'm not too sure how I'm going to actually execute it, but, you know, kind of something like that, but definitely some walls in there, too. Alrighty, so I'm a little bit nervous for this, but I figured, enchanting, it's magical, and magic, magic is always purple, of course. When we were branch mining, just one episode ago now, we found a ton, a ton of gravel. I think I left it all down here inside of one of these chests. I... Uh, what, yeah, it's one of these chests. We got so much gravel. Oh, ho, 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 it's changing. It's changing already. My poor evil tower. I'm not going to be able to see it from here. Oh, jeez. Your crikeys, man. Look, I'm nervous about this. Very, very nervous about this. But I was thinking a little bit of purple concrete and a tiny bit of purple terracotta as well. A block that I genuinely, I don't think I've ever built within survival. That's one beautiful color. Up here in the tower to contain it all in so I can dump water as I please, fences. Then I guess we started off with like a little bit of a solid concrete. I know for sure I want to do like the normal concrete as well. I love building with this stuff. Like the texture is sometimes a little bit easier to work with when it's... Oh, oh, whoops. Uh, there's no more delay. So uh, I don't know if I should be doing this first or if I should be doing the other stuff first where I like figure out the walls. But what I want to try and do here is pop the tower in a little bit. I want to pop the tower in and I want to make it a little bit randomized. I want to come in with all shades of different purple and start to wrap it around this thing. You're slowly climbing higher and higher and higher. You know, how towers do. Oh, I love that part in the build when the build really starts to come to life. It was just but a few mew hours ago that this build was a dream inside of my head. And I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm kind of pulling it off. Down on the ground and near this thing on the hill, I'm trying to grow some gigantic oak trees. And I was actually thinking about maybe importing some cherry trees from across the valley as well. For the longest time, that whole side of the base has kind of felt like almost not even part of the base or something completely separate. So maybe like cherry trees will help it feel all the same. When it comes to our build, oh, it's getting grand and it's getting tall. We got that lower part of the build. Then I decided to put a fade on the bottom of the thing with stone bricks that then goes to cobblestone mixed with andesite and mossy. And then we get the purple top. Oh, the purple. I love it. Now we're around here with the cherry trees. I want to be a little bit strategic. I had this cool vision of like maybe cherry petals drifting, billowing slowly into the fjord. I think it could be kind of beautiful. Alas, but now it's time for us to get posted up on the inside of the build. Over here on the inside, we've got a little bit of purple going on, but really the main part of this build is going to sit all the way up at the top of it. You see, I kind of figured Enchanting Tower, no matter what, would go kind of hard inside of this world. Like, imagine getting this view every single time I need to enchant something. It's, it's breathtaking. Where I uh, think I want to start this whole top part of the build up here is maybe with some logs hanging off at the side of the build. Then I'm going to go ahead and strip those logs. I was thinking oak logs at the top of the build too. It makes it like nice light and airy, kind of beautiful. You know how it goes. Then maybe what I would do is on every single side do the exact same thing. I'm not sure, like for sure, but I think like turning this build, maybe opening it back up again is probably a good call. So what I could do also is like maybe logs on the corner right there to like get that original shape, capture it back. Now you might not have noticed, but this here is big fancy tower. So for big fancy tower, maybe like cool fancy side pieces on this thing too. Then it could almost like start to curve it back up and around, almost like the clock tower or something. Except this time it doesn't like become a clock. It stays like pretty open. That's all gonna mean, by the time I'm said and done with it, the floor is gonna sit on this layer right here. I think I'm gonna have to go back down and get a little bit more purple to finish that off. But yeah, the floor sits over here. With the floor sitting over here, I was thinking maybe somewhere like this spot right here could be the entrance to the top of the build. Entrance, shim entrance, entrance, shim entrance. We might as well go ahead and get it in. I was thinking for the entrance. Oh, no, it lined up wrong. I was thinking for the entrance. I would do maybe a... I figured the best, the easiest, and maybe the coolest way to get a grand entrance up to our enchanting setup is, of course, going to be a bubble column. I imagine a bubble column going from... I don't have so touch. 
Imagine a bubble column going from the bottom all the way up to the top, rocketing us to this spot right here. Compared to some of the other bubble columns we worked on inside of this world, this is like bubble column basically on easy mode. With my fence gates and blocks fully blocked in, I could dump water up at the top of this thing, move down to the bottom, all on the same breath, take a little bit of kelp, I'll place it all the way going up to the top, and voila. Voila, just like that, a bubble column that fully rockets us to the top of the build. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, hey, oh, hold up, oh, hold up. The shaders, Silders and Hands Default, by the way, but the shaders, oh, with the tinted glass in here. Oh, that's beautiful. I need to make a giant build all out of tinted glass for that one. <laughs> that's so cool. Now look, I've got to be honest, so far for today's build, I've been nervous at some parts and not really nervous at other parts. This is one of those parts where unfortunately I become a little bit nervous again. So up here at the very top of the build, I'll do this whole like cool arch thing and then I'm going to have these logs go straight up, maybe like three, four blocks. Now I figured, you know, to add a little bit of variation, so it's not all just oak tone, I come in with a little bit of spruce. Oh. You, 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 what in the world are you doing in my beautiful enchanting building? Huh? Oh, God. Ugh, the uh, feeling that he gives me, it makes me sick anyways up here. What I wanted to do is maybe go up a little bit here, and then I guess, I don't know, like maybe it's time for another subtle arch or something like that. The entire time I'm going up, I think it'll look nice to maybe like strip all of these things, but this is what I'm nervous about. Uh, so I've taken a look back at the build a couple times today, and so far, so good. The shape is looking mighty strong and mighty not wrong at all, but... I feel like the top of the tower can either make or break this thing, not only turn it into a potentially really strange looking shape, but maybe even more importantly, just make it look like really weird and lame. I think I know the perfect block, and I, I gathered those up between episodes as well, but... I just don't know if I'm gonna know how to do the shape. I want like a... See, usually on these towers inside of this world, I do like a split tower or something like that, but this time I want to do a single cone-shaped tower up at the top of this thing. Uh. Well, hey, would you look at that? The perfect cherry tree grew right there. It's going off to the side, out of the way, and yeah, kind of perfectly in the valley. Oh, God, he's at the top of the tower now. <sighs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's looking so cool. That is so cool looking. Ah, it's perfect. Alrighty, anyways, inside of my little world here, I've been on my grind. A long time ago, you might recall, we built the beautiful Amethyst Farm, and actually, in between episodes, I just about fully harvested the thing. Seems that the entire time I've been over here working, building, and grinding, this thing continued to grow, so that's kind of beautiful. Top of the build. Here's what I want to do. To be completely honest, I don't even really know where this roof technically should begin. Maybe we'll go one higher block up and kind of kick things off up there. I'll add a couple fences under the side because of details, of course. But also maybe more importantly for the shape of the tower thing that I want to do right here, we can like build straight off of the fences. It's kind of beautiful and perfect. Thinking on all cylinders right here, what I want to do is create a circular roof, a cone shape that goes up. At the same time though, I want to make this cone shaped roof not your average cone shaped roof. I want to have it like swoop up on the sides too. I think we could probably start everything off with like a couple staircases or something like that. Then on these sides, I could probably have these like dark tile sections go straight up all the way up to the top of the tower and cap things off maybe like that. Then, of course, there's only one star of the show. After we kick it off with a little bit of deep slate, it's time for amethyst. Amethyst and even more amethyst. I'm going to need to figure out the exact shape that I need to do. It's probably curving up, like, you know, something like that, and then maybe block in the corner or something. But shape aside, amethyst and deep slate. I mean, look, simply put, I built the amethyst farm so I could actually, like, start building with the amethyst blocks. And then, since I built it, I don't think I built with the amethyst blocks at all, anywhere at all. So, it's a long time coming, baby. I almost feel like, too, maybe because it's not really going to conserve that many blocks, I should probably fill on the insides of the tower, too. That way, when I just, like, finish up the tower and I look up on the inside, it's, like, fully done. Another thing that I know is every time I go up, I want to wrap this thing around the side of the tower. So what I think I do is like a deep slate staircase wraps in and then, you know, kind of keeps going up. See here, I feel like so far so good, but this next part of the tower needs to get way more steep. So maybe what I need to start doing here is like cutting this thing way higher and faster, escalating all the way up to the ceiling of the world. Maybe. I feel like that would probably make sense. Then what I would do is continue this all the way up and yeah, keep stepping up. Mm-hmm. After that, maybe it's time for a couple more staircases, perhaps even our final ones. This is getting to the inside. All right, then it's decisions. Decisions, decisions, decisions. So on the inside of the tower right here, I'm 
I'm gonna have a little bit of a hurdle. What do I do for the top? I want it to be pointy, not round. I uh, don't really know what to do here in this situation. Maybe what I do is I just went up two, so this time maybe I should go up three. So that'll get me all the way up to here, really, really high up. Then maybe I need to, like, cap it all off with, like, one more final really tall spike. Maybe what I should do is, like, I don't know, do I do, like, four? Or do I even do, like, five? Make it really, really steep. Ooh, I feel like... I feel like five. I feel like five is maybe the answer. That makes this tower really, really tall, really, really steep, and also coincidentally something I can't really get off of, can I? I'm not going to land that jump, am I? Uh, oh, I land the jump easy. And so just like that, I mean, no clue how it looks, but the top of the tower might be finished. At this point, realistically, there's only one thing we can do and take a nap and take a step back. All right, so up close, look at the tower. I mean, it's, it looks like a tower. It looks fine from up close. It's very cool looking. The real challenge is once we get a little bit farther away, say on the other side of the fjord. What in the world, though? <laughs> oh, spoilers. Oh, spoilers. I think it's going to look beautiful. I think I maybe kind of messed up the shape a little bit on the top of it. It's slightly more rounded than I was dreaming of initially, but boom. Oh, it's beautiful. No, it's so beautiful looking. I think that's the shape of the tower. That's the top of it. It looks a little thin. Maybe I could thicken it up with some details. Like maybe what I could do is come back in here and throw some chains and maybe even a more fences on the top of the build. But oh, baby. Oh, I think I did it. Crikey. So Jiminy Crickets. Uh, cherry trees. And oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. At this point in the build, before we finish everything up with the enchanting setup supreme, I think there's one final thing we need to do. Details, details, and a little bit more details, baby. Well, and well, 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 would you look at the time? It looks like it's just about time for today's comment of the day again. Today, I would like to continue our discussion of games I've been enjoying. I kind of asked you guys right at the beginning about games because... Well, that's what I'm into right now. It's all about the dweller and other games. <laughs> I'm purple. Nah, so lately, I don't know what it is, but I'm in that nostalgic feel. I guess it kind of happens every time of the year. It doesn't, but I feel like I... I feel like I always end up talking about it this time of the year, actually. Right now, as in currently current, I briefly touched on it in the other episode of Pajama Sam. I finished the game and... I, it was beautiful. It was a, a true homecoming experience, I guess you could say for me. It was like so nostalgic and then I started playing this other old game. I don't know if you guys know about it, but it's called Spy Fox. These are all like old point and click adventure games, which is like, I don't know, something in me still to this very day. I love that style of game where you got to like look around and find things like that's the kind of like horror subgenre that I like, like puzzle horror games, click around, search around the room, find something, you take it to the other room, you know, and then like unleash the demon. You know how it goes. And this other old game that I was recently playing is called Spy Fox. It's like a similar premise, except this time instead of that like dark nowhere vibe or whatever you want to call it, it's like um, almost like a James Bond ripoff thing, which fun fact, I've never seen any of the James Bond movies. I don't really like action stuff. Not gonna lie though, out of like complete sheer lack of being able to concentrate on one thing at a single time, I got bored of Spy Fox and actually switched it over to a different throwback for me. Pokemon is Shining Pearl, or Shimmering Pearl, I don't know what they called it, I don't know, something. It doesn't really like have a good flow to it, I think. Whatever they call that game, I started to replay that game, or actually like play it really for like the first time. You see, when I was younger, my brother had Pokemon Pearl, I had Pokemon Diamond all the way Diamond Gang. Rewinding here a little bit actually, right before that I played this game and oh. I played this other game and it's like, I almost don't even want to say the name of it because I don't think it was that good of a game. I mean, it had good jump scares, really kind of like scary for sure but like I, I just get so frustrated when the game has like a mandatory chase run scene where it's like very overly difficult and it's like i just can't beat it i, I can't run fast enough to get away from this ghost demon thing but 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 anyways i played this game called silver chains as well which yeah, was fine but i get tired of playing horror games and it's like i finished them in like two days or whatever so back to pokemon it is i guess and so, my friends, my dear, dear friends, we have just about done it. Today, right here, right now, at the very end of the episode, there's only a few more things we need to get done, including farm a little bit of obsidian. Of course, we all know it, a little bit of obsidian for a brand new enchanting table. That'll go pretty nice. Using this handy little paper farm we built for ourselves a long time ago, we can go ahead and get all of the paper we need, and more. 
And then, swinging right next door over to the cow farm that I've been using for quite some time. Oh, the leather? Not a problem at all. That'll be easy. So far today, doing this build, these build episodes that I make for you from time to time, they're so enjoyable. Like, I get to chill. I get to design. I, like, during these episodes, I really just chill, sit back, vibe, design, and then hopefully, by the time I'm done with it, end up with a build. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous looking towery build with trees filling in all around it too oh my so anyways for the rest of our enchantment setup we're gonna need a little bit of diamonds conveniently right over here i've left the diamonds for a full max level enchantment setup we're actually only gonna need 15 bookshelves which means i come out of the deal with extra for today's episode this build i've tried my very hardest to make my most beautiful enchanting setup that i have ever designed and i mean i'll let you be the judge of it but i'm really really happy with how this turned out this tower is by far the tallest tower in the land and maybe even the tallest tower I've ever built. It kind of completely overshadows that demonic one in the background too. Ah, uh, whoops, I guess I need to build something over here so I can see them both. One of my favorite views of this tower is gotta be this view right here. Like walking up on it, you could definitely see both towers and it just feels so grand and like finished and everything like that. I swear, sometime soon I'm gonna come back in and get something on the ground above the Amethyst Farm, and this whole area will immediately feel like way more closed in and like actually built in. I'm slowly but surely starting to fill in some trees, and I had the idea of like maybe some tall birch trees in here too. I think those could look cool with the cherry and then the giant oak trees as well. The build on the ground is actually just about done. On the inside of the build, I actually went ahead and basically fully detailed it. Meanwhile, on the outside of the build, I just need a porch. When it comes to actually how I'll like get over to the build, what I was thinking is cut a path straight off of the path that I kind of already have. It'll wrap right around over this way to the porch. <laughs> now porches, they're a super simple being. All I need to do is fill it in a little bit, then it'll be beautiful. Now the goal with this enchanting setup, now that we just about have it fully in and complete, is to of course come back around and at long last update the armor situation. There are a couple enchantments that I desperately, desperately need to get on the armor, and then the tools, I've, I've got to upgrade those as well, but first things first, the armor. With healed up armor, then we can go on the adventures that I've been really wanting to take on. For example, head over to the end and conquer the entire dimension. For other example, to go down to the ancient city we found a long time ago and also conquer that entire place. And with the armor situation finally in check, well, only a little bit later than I probably should have had it in check, well, whatever. With the armor situation finally at last fully in check, the world, the entire world in any dream, it will be ours. At last, we've done it. The outside of the build from this side of the build. We've got a small little porch wrapping around the build, then that part of the build, and then a tall, tall tower with lanterns and lights and campfires and purple. Oh my, is so much. Then when we walk up inside of the build, open the door for the first time. Oh, look at it. We step down a little bit, and then we have the bed right here and a little bit of decoration going on. A window to look out, and this is pretty nice. Speaking of windows to look out, the best view of the entire base so far, I think it's got to be this spot right here. I want to like put a tree down there, but at the same time, maybe I don't because, I mean, if I block this view, like, wow, the view, you can see, like, everything that we've done so far. Over here on the inside, I did a little bit of detailing. It's really not too much, but, like, you know, kind of make it feel a little bit alive with some essentials. And then we've got the step up, the grand step up, all the way up to the top. Now, up here at the top, it's a little bit cramped, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Dead center, we'll put the enchanting table. After that, around the enchanting table, like we do, we need to put a little bit of books. Maybe we'll start out with something like that. What I was kind of envisioning for this enchanting setup is maybe a little bit of, like, randomness, variation. So maybe it's, like, taller in some spots and maybe, like, lower in some of the other spots. I don't know. Something like that so far. That's kind of cool. Maybe we could step it up over there. And then I've got one more, hey, 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 I guess it doesn't matter that much where it goes because I think I've already exceeded all expectations, so why not? We'll slap it right there, at, at least for now. If I slide inside of this thing, haha, <laughs> level 30, oh, it's beautiful. Just real quick, well, I guess you can't win them all. And so, just like that, the enchanting setup is just about finished. The final thing that I need for this area is a way down. I got the way up, the way down. It's gonna go over here. What I'm gonna need to get in here is a slime block or something else to soften the fall. But we'll do that later. At last, at long last, the enchanting setup is now moved over to this base, marking the second one of this entire world. And I, at least I hope, I think, the most beautiful one of the entire world, too. 
Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. The area around the spot will see further upgrades in the next few episodes. But so far, what do you think about the build? Do you like it? Did I do good? As always, for early access to every single one of these episodes, tap the Patreon link down below for world downloads and channel members. There was just a download last episode, so that's pretty cool. Until next time, it's been me, your wonderfully handsome lad, Waddles. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.